One of my criticisms of quote-unquote mainstream media has long been, at least since Trump left office, that there's not enough of an emphasis and enough topics aren't brought back to what is foundational to all of our political conversations right now, which is that one of the guys in the race showed us last time he was president that he doesn't respect the Constitution enough to put it above himself when he refused to leave office until all of his illegal schemes failed. And to mainstream media's credit, since this Jack Smith filing, and since the debate where Vance refused to answer the question about the 2020 election, there has been a lot of questions to Republicans about this. And the latest example is Laura Trump, the uh, wife of Eric Trump, Trump's daughter-in-law. And she really struggled to answer this question, as so many of these Republicans do, because they can't just admit the legitimacy of our election. So here's Dana Bash asking Laura Trump the question, just she hates to be asked. And then we'll look at other moments from this interview and then look at other Republicans being asked the same question. To, uh, something that we learned this week about uh, from prosecutors on Donald Trump's role in trying to overturn the election results in 2020. When Mike Pence's life was in jeopardy, an aide told prosecutors that uh, Trump said, quote, so what? Do you think that's an appropriate response to the notion that his vice president's life appeared to be in danger? Well, I think that this is a, a ridiculous ploy, of course, in uh, 30 days to an election to try and dissuade people from voting for Donald Trump. You know, the January 6th situation has been amplified to a level that I don't think is uh, is almost believable to so many people right now. When they're struggling to put food on the table for their families, when they're struggling to fill up their gas tanks, when you have dog and cat euthanization rates at an all-time high right now, because people are going to have to turn over their animals because they can't afford to have a family pet right now. When you have wars breaking out around the world, this is not the top concern for the people of this country and the fact that this is coming to the forefront just speaks volumes about the fact that the Democrats probably don't feel good about their candidate of Kamala Harris. This is not the main concern of the American people. They want their affordable it, life back. They want jobs back. They want their country back and they want their me, safety and security back. And they know who brought it to them. It's Donald J. Trump. So all the things she's listed off, I daily go through and address. She ended in safety, for example, this this notion that we're less safe, crimes out of control when, of course, we're safer than we've been in a very long time based on the crime stats. But interestingly, when she said this is not the top concern for people, even if I took you at face value, which I don't, because when you poll, democracy is still one of the top issues that people are concerned about, protecting and upholding our democracy? Why is this all of a sudden a concern of a lot of people? Because of your father-in-law, Laura? But even if it weren't, I'd say it should be. Because all the things she talked about are solved and addressed through our democracy. And when they act like there's this, this ridiculous effort, the term she used was ploy, to overemphasize something that's not that relevant for political reasons, they show how little they care about our constitutional process. I, I hate how hyperbolic that sounds because how of, of how consequential it is, but that's what we're talking about here. Your side's the only side that can't just acknowledge it, it's bad to try to block the peaceful transfer power. That's what Trump tried to do. That's what the fraudulent elector scheme was. Trump's never apologized for that. He's never been held accountable for it. He still won't accept the legitimate results of that election. No, we're not going to just drop that. Sorry, we're not. It's not a political ploy. It's not an effort to blow something out of proportion because actually the failure of the media has not been blowing this out of proportion, but instead allowing it to be reduced and minimized by people like Laura Trump. So that's the the big issue. And then you see it in this next moment. Before playing it, do please click the subscribe button if you haven't already. There's millions of you out there. I know you're out there watching <laughs> based on our stats that aren't subscribed. So do please. Uh, here's this. Let's look ahead. 
to how Donald Trump will respond to the results of this election. Polls, of course, show that it is very, very close. It could go either way. Is there any circumstance in which Donald Trump would accept a defeat and concede? Well, of course, if he feels that this is a free, fair and transparent election, which, by the way, is my number one goal at the RNC. You mentioned uh, at the top, I am the co-chair of the Republican National Committee. And our number one uh, charge has been trying to make sure that we restore faith in our electoral process. There were a lot of people after 2020 all across this country who felt like maybe they couldn't trust that system. We want to. Ah, 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 I don't want. Really, Laura? Oh my gosh. I wonder why. I wonder why they felt that way. I wonder why people didn't believe the election was legitimate. Could it be that the sitting president of the United States got all of the people loyal to him to push for years, all the way up until now? It's continuing. Lies. Could that be why people on your side don't believe the security, legitimacy? And uh, an efficacy of our elections, could that be why? That's exactly why. You can't participate in convincing someone of something and then point to the fact that they believe it as justification for why you convinced them of it. That's not how logic works, Laura. Um, but, of course, when she says two things on this, and then we'll go to a different topic. When she says that Trump will accept the results if he feels the election was free and fair. She's right. She's not lying. Trump will accept the results if he feels that the election was free and fair. Not if it's free and fair, if he feels it is. And the only thing that will make him feel like it's free and fair is if he wins. A dangerous, dangerous position that puts our democracy in. And then number two, Laura Trump has gotten a lot of accolades, celebration from MAGA for being the co-chair of the RNC who's making her top issue election security. We're going to make sure this election is secure. So if Trump loses, Laura, and you, after years of apparently securing our elections, say they're so not secure again that Trump had it stolen from him, you're the failure. You have to, you have to go... I don't care, though. Woo-hoo. I love that the election was stolen because I was supposed to prevent it. I didn't. Now, obviously, it's going to be not stolen, legitimate, but that's going to be the claim. And if your whole thing is securing the election, then you, you're the one who failed. You. Because you said you were going to prevent it. Then on Hurricane Helene and the response to it, it's continuing over and over online, especially. You have MAGA making their one focus, not helping people, not caring about people, not making sure resources are getting to people as needed, but instead lying about the federal government's response for political reasons. You need to listen to what the Republican senator from North Carolina, Tom T Tillis, said about the uh, rescue and recovery efforts. So here's a Republican saying, despite what my fellow Republicans are saying about Biden Harris, there's been an effective response. So that's why they're playing it. And then Laura Trump will again say, well, I don't believe him. I'm actually impressed with how much attention was paid to a region that wasn't likely to have experienced the impact that they did. For anybody who thinks that any level of government, anybody here could have been prepared precisely for what we're dealing with here, clearly are clueless. But right now I'm out here to say that we're doing a good job. So he and others are saying, please, to the former president and to others, stop spreading misinformation because it's hurting people in North Carolina. I'm so glad to hear that he feels that way, but it's coming directly from people there. You can go online and you can look at videos of people recording themselves and posting online saying, we need help. No one has come here. We have nothing. And no one has, has even addressed the situation in my neighborhood or my area. So I'm glad to hear that he feels very good about that. And I honestly, I hope that we hear more of that. I want them to recover there as soon as possible. And it's tragic. The loss of life that, that we've already seen, I think that number, sadly, is going to continue to go higher. And it's Yeah, and earlier in the interview, you've heard so many times <clears throat> this idea, and Laura Trump perpetuated too, that somehow undocumented immigrants' money that Biden-Harris gave to them, that means that it didn't go to other people. And they're just fabricating this stuff. Um, 
again, unfortunately, because it's misleading people into believing no help is on the way if they haven't been properly reached yet. So yes, address the issues in the in the response and, and make sure and listen to people's stories and then try to get those stories to the proper authorities and all that. But this politicization of it is exhausting and counterproductive. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Get the bonus show by clicking the join button below.